Hi everybody, Mary here, and it is week six in our basic chemistry class. And this time we are going to talk about the metric system, how to convert within the metric system, and dimensional analysis, which is a fancy way of saying converting units. So let's take a running leap at this. The story so far. We've talked in the past about the scientific method, observation, hypothesis, experiments, data, and then using all of that to draw a conclusion. The data can be qualitative and quantitative, and through this, science came up with some organized structure of matter. That useful information was used to create our periodic table, lots of information about individual elements, atomic mass, atomic number, how they bond their ion number, and physical and chemical properties. But in order to do that, science had to have quantitative data. Now, if you recall, there's two kinds of data, data with and without numbers. And the word quantitative has the word quantity buried within it. So this is data with numbers included. In order for science to advance, they had to make measurements. And in order to make measurements, you have to have a system of units that everyone agrees upon. Without that, then there can be no collaboration, there can be no communication, and there can be no true science. And so units and measurements are very vital and important. Prior to their being organized system of units, people used whatever was handy, and body parts were handy. The ancient Romans used things like the thumb. Uh, the width of the thumb was the uncia. The uncia is where we get our word inch. Um, a mile was how far Roman soldiers could walk. A thousand steps were equivalent to a mile. A foot was, well, a foot. Uh, the ancient unit, the cubit, and if you are a biblical scholar, Noah built the ark so many cubits by so many cubits. The cubit is elbow to fingertips. The yard was a newer unit, and that historically comes from King Henry of England about a thousand years ago, and it was the length from his nose to his thumb. And I remember my mom, who was a great sewer, measuring yard goods by a piece of fabric, she would hold it from her thumb to her nose and say, oop, that is about a yard. It was a quick and dirty measurement, and it sort of worked. Now, some of these original measurements are still part of our vocabulary, but they have been standardized. A foot is now officially 12 inches. An inch has a, an official size. Those of you who are into horses or have spent time around horses, a hand is four inches and it's used to measure the height of a horse to the withers. Those of you who are interested in boating or sailing, a fathom was used to measure the depth of a harbor. And a fathom was two hand spans, or today it's standardized at 72 inches. So many of these body parts have been standardized through time. But for many hundreds and thousands of years, they were just body parts because they were handy and everybody had them. Well, late in the 1700s, it was necessary for economic reasons more than anything that people had standard units. After the French Revolution, the French Revolution was the late 1700s, right after the American Revolution, the French National Assembly said, mostly for economic purposes, let's come up with a standard set of measurements and let's base it on something real and physical. So they created a group of scientists and geographers and people of learning and said, go create a system of measurement. What they decided to base it on was planet Earth and they sent out a bunch of surveyors to survey distances, and they said, let's create the meter. Now, the meter comes from the Greek word metron, metron meaning to measure, and the meter was defined as one ten millionth, the, the distance from the North Pole to the equator going through Paris, France. Now, of course, this was a little over 200 years ago. That measurement has been 
it measured more exactly in the last 200 years, but that was the original definition of a meter. They also said, let's base this on things to make this system simple, simple to convert between and based on a common substance. So they based the metric system on 10 to make it a decimal system, sort of like we can convert in money, and based on the most common substance on the surface of the earth, water. All other units were defined and created using the number 10 and water, and they defined the gram, the liter, and the degree Celsius. And I, I found this picture of this old poster uh, from 200 years ago trying to inform the average French citizen after the creation of the metric system how to actually use and apply this new system of measurements. So I thought that was pretty nifty. Um, that was an educational poster of the time. Well, as you can imagine, in 200 years from the late 1700s until the late 1900s, there was a lot of advancements that have been made in science and technology. So in the 1960s, it was determined that an update to the metric system needed to be created. A group of learned people got together and said, let's update this. Let's make the definitions of these metric units a lot more precise. And the new system is called the International System of Units. And the kilogram, still the same size as it always has been, but was more precisely defined. There are standard kilograms. There's a handful of them around the world. Every major country has a couple standard kilograms. The United States has a few of them um, hidden away in vaults because if all heck breaks loose and we have to recreate our standards of measure, the standard kilogram is preserved. Um, one second, which is the metric unit of time is defined now as how many oscillations of a cesium-133 atom. The distance one meter, instead of being based on distance measured on the earth, is how far light travels in so much time. Again, still the same length, but much more precisely measured. Now, this modernized metric system is often abbreviated as the SI system. And one of the questions students ask very often is, if it's the International System of Units, why is it referred to as the SI system instead of the IS system? Well, the French created the metric system. The work done on modernizing it happened to occur in France. And in French, it is common that you put the adjective after the noun. So in the U.S., we would say blue ball. And in France, you would say ball blue. And because of the fact that the adjective comes after the noun, in France, it would be système international. So this is the système international of units. And that is why it is abbreviated as, as the SI system. And you will read that abbreviation all over the place. It is vital if you are going into any sort of a scientific endeavor, if you are going into a health career, an engineering career, um, any scientific endeavor that you understand the metric system. The whole world is going metric. The United States is slowly evolving into a metric country, slowly but surely, but we are transitioning over and you need to know the base metric units. And I know you've had these before. I know you had these in junior high and high school, but as part of this course, we will be using the metric system exclusively. Now, you must know that mass, the base metric unit, is the gram, and the abbreviation is lowercase g. The metric unit of volume is the liter, and the abbreviation is L. Now, very often for volume liter, the abbreviation is lowercase l. When I write it, I very often write it cursive L or uppercase L. And you might go, well, that's not as correct because it really is lowercase L. Why do you do that? Frankly, because if I just write that, it looks like a one. So clear communication in science is vital. And we want to make sure we are clearly communicating between us. The metric unit of length is the meter, lowercase m. 
temperature, Celsius was the old um, temperature unit was Celsius in the metric system, where zero degrees Celsius was the temperature at water freezes, is the temperature at, what, at which water freezes. In the new, more modern SI system of units, zero is defined as zero Kelvin, absolute zero. So this is one slight difference between the SI system and the metric system. And I apologize right now, I should always be using the term SI system, but I do periodically call the modern system the metric system, old habits from old scientists here. Time, the metric unit of time is seconds. And there are others that have to do with electricity and energy and power and uh, radiation and a whole bunch of things, but these are the ones that we are going to start with. All right, that will get us started. And next time we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how you convert between different mass units, volume units, etc. See you then. Thank you.